Today we will start with uh, the second part of this code lab. So I have opened up here. And we will continue from the seventh step. So I think last week we stopped at this part. So we, we were trying to build a chat UI that can show a text box below. So you can type a message here and send a message. So what we are going to do today is to show the message at the bottom. So I have opened up the project in my Visual Studio Code. Let's see. Okay, where's my chat? Okay. All right, I should share the link of the group here. So in case you need it, I will paste it in the chat. So let me know if you want to join, but uh, you haven't been approved yet. So yeah, feel free to interrupt me anytime. And yeah, last week we stopped here. So we have created the material app. So we, we use a friendly chat app widget to wrap the material app widget. And then inside here, we have a chat screen, which is a stateful widget. So before that, let me start up my simulator. Okay, then run it. Usually the first time takes longer. Okay, so this is what we have now. And this part is not positioned to the bottom yet. So I guess what we will do today is position this to the bottom of the screen, plus showing the message at the bottom. So to recap, last time we have a row widget. So this row widget, it consists of a flexible widget. And inside that it has a text view, which is this part that shows a send a message placeholder. And then there's also a button. This is an icon button. And inside here you can define what is the button you want to show. So we are using the material icon. So it's the send icon. So, so far when you tap on here, nothing will happen yet. But at least for the icon button, you can see like there is a ripple effect when you tap on it. And then we also define a handle, uh, a handle submitted method here, which doesn't do anything yet. Yeah, apart from clearing the text. So if I type something when I press this, then it will clear the text. So what we are going to do today is, let's see, yeah, to implement a chat message list. So, we are going to create a widget that display chat messages using composition. Yeah, so we, we will use multiple smaller widgets 
to build a large widget that shows the message list. We will start with a widget that represents a single chat message, then nesting that widget in a parent scrollable list. Finally, I, I will nest the scrollable list in, uh, in the basic app scaffold. Okay, so what we're going to do here is add the chat message stateless widget. Okay, so after the friendly chat app class type stless. All right. After friendly chat app. So this one is like a code snippet uh, from the Flutter extension. So for, for those who are new, uh, this is actually in Visual Studio Code, you can install the Dart and also Flutter extensions, the official one so that you can get a bunch of useful tools like help you to generate codes or help you to do, do re refactoring, adding or removing widgets. So yeah, back to the code. So now we have this chat message widget. Okay, this is what I did. And now we need to add a row to the build method for chat message. So inside the container, we should add a margin property. Okay. Inside here, paste this and save. Okay. Nothing will happen yet because we haven't include this in our chat screen. So what else? The containers child will be a row. The row list contain of two widget, an avatar and a column of text. So I guess this is what we are going to add. We should add this to our container. Oh, thanks, Albert, for posting up that link. So for those who want to catch up, can follow that. And now we have this, but there's a bunch of variables undefined. And now what? Add a text variable and a constructor to the top of chat message. So a text variable. Put it here. And a constructor. Okay. So now we left with name. Yep, name still undefined. So we need to define the name variable. Replacing your name with your own name. You use this variable to label each chat message. So right now we will hard code it first. What we do is after the main method, after the main function at the following line. After the main function, hmm.
here. Did I miss out some step? I feel like I'm, I might have missed something. Hmm. I think I should open up the GitHub link that Albert provided. Okay, so this is from last week, I suppose. And we are now at displaying messages. Aha, uh -huh, the name is actually here. And then what else? Um, where is this chat message used? Oh, it's at the handle submitted. Okay, never mind. I will put this at the right place first. Um, let's put one for code. Step five. Step five here. Mm, this one we have. This is debugging. Okay, probably it will be in the next step. Let's see what is what are the observations. So in the build method, it returns a row that display a simple graphical avatar to represent the user and a column widget that contain the sender's name and the text message. So this is what we see here. We have a row. And then in the children of row, we have the avatar. And also we have the name of the sender plus the text messages. And the circle avatar is personalized by labeling it with the user's first initial. So, yep, here is where we define the first initial in the circle avatar. So there is also a cross axis alignment parameter and it specify dot start in the row constructor. So this is to define the position of the avatar and messages. For the avatar, the parent is a row widget. So cross axis alignment dot start will give the highest position along the vertical axis. For the messages, parent is a column widget. So cross axis alignment dot start will align the text uh, at the furthest left position. Okay, this part is 
the alignment of this one. Next to the avatar, two text widgets are vertically aligned to display the sender's name on top and the text message below. So two text widgets next to the avatar. You can see here there's a column and then this is the sender's name plus the text messages and the output is like this. So this is a column and this is the children of each column. So, and a team will provide the default Flutter team data object for the app. And later we will override this default team to style your app differently. Mm -hmm. And the text team property. Okay, that will allow you to define different style and font sizes and other text attributes. The sender's name is styled to make it larger. Mm -hmm. Type messages into the text field. Okay, let me type some message. And now we can type a long message and see what happens. Okay, do we have a long message? No. Okay, so it just continues on and on like this. Later is step nine. You will wrap the column in an expanded widget to make the text widget wrap. So I guess what this will do is instead of just showing one long line in a single uh, line, you can also define the wrapping so that it can wrap to the next line. And now we will implement the chat message list in the UI. Okay. And then we also want this list to be scrollable, just like any chat app. Um, and this should also represent the messages in the chronological order. Recent message displayed at the bottom most. All right, let's do this. First, let's add a messages list to the chat screen state. Under chat screen state, add a list member called messages. Okay. Where is our chat screen state? Here. And then, yeah, now finally, we will modify the handle submitted method. This line we have already. So now we should copy this and put it inside the handle submitted method. Like this, let's remove the new command. Okay, and we need to put the focus back. All right, so actually we need to control the focus state as well. So we need to add a focus node to the chat screen state.
here. Add the focus node to the text view in Build Text Composer. So it's this line. Focus node in the Build Text Composer inside the text view. I'll put it here. Finally, in handle submitted, after set state, we can request focus. Oh, okay. Something new. So here, what, what can we observe here? Each item in the list is a chat message instance. Yep, each item in the list is a chat message instance. And the list is initialized to be empty. Calling set state to modify the messages. Let's Flutter know that this part of the widget tree change and needs to rebuild the UI. Hmm. So this is informing Flutter that, hey, uh, the messages array has changed. So anything in the widget tree that depends on messages, it needs to be rebuilt. So only synchronous operations should be performed in set state. Otherwise, the framework could rebuild the widgets before the operation finished. Yeah, so this is something to take note. Whatever that we put inside the set state, it has to be synchronous so that uh, Flutter knows that whenever uh, it executes this line, it will rebuild the UI. In general, it's possible to call set state with empty closure. Mm -hmm. Updating data inside set state closure is preferred, so you don't forget to call it afterward. So technically, we could also put it like this. So this means that you are inserting the message first. After that, you you tell uh, Flutter to uh, rebuild the widget. But then usually uh, putting inside is recommended. So I will always do this. Finally, hot reload the app. Okay. Then now we can enter some text into the text view. Okay, so right now it is just changing the focus. So this the cursor is still inside here without me having to tap on it after I press submit. And finally, we, we will now display the message list. So what do we do? We get the chat message widgets from the messages list and put inside this, this view. Inside the build method for chat screen state. Okay, so this is inside chat screen state. Add a list view inside a column. Okay. We have a column, or do we? Let's see what we have now in the chat screen state. Um, we have a build text composer in the body. So this part is new. I will copy this 
and replace the whole body. Oops, it has overflow. So I guess we will come to that later. So what can we observe? The list view builder factory builds a list on demand by providing a function that is called once per item in the list. And it returns a new widget on each call. It automatically detects mutation of its children and initiates a review. So in the list view builder, we define uh, the method that builds the item here like this and it returns a new widget on each call so each of this is a widget and the parameters pass customize the list contents and appearance yep so we can put in padding and this will determine the white space around the message text. And we also have item count. This is specifying the number of messages in the list. And we also have the item builder that get uh, each chat message in the messages list. Because we don't need the current build in uh, context, can ignore the first argument. Yeah, so this one is actually a context. So for uh, for the argument that we don't use uh, in Dart, you generally put an underscore here so that it indicates that you won't need to refer to this uh, variable. So it says naming the argument with an underscore and nothing else is a convention that indicate the argument won't be used. Yep. So if let's say in future you have an item builder that needs to access to the context, then you will put the context here. And then here you can uh, refer to it. So the body of the scaffold widget now contains a list of incoming messages as well as the input field and the send button. So yeah, this is what we see here in the body of the scaffold widget. So a column, it will lay out its direct children vertically. So here we have we have column and then uh, the children of the column is what is the list view, a divider and also the text composer. So this is what we see here. This is, this is a column, this whole thing here under the app bar. And this is the list view. This is the divider, this divider, and finally we have the text composer at the bottom. So whenever you want to stack the widget vertically, then you use a column. And also we have flexible so this flexible, you can imagine like you are using a flex widget if you are coming from web or CSS. So this one, it tells Flutter that uh, you want that widget to take as much space as possible. So it kind of fill the column height while the text field remain the fixed size because we wrap the list view with a flexible widget so that now this part, it will take as much space as possible. While this one, it stays this uh, fixed height, like this.
and divider yeah this is straightforward just draw a horizontal line and then we have the container as the parent of text composer so whenever you want to define things like background images paddings or margins then you can wrap uh, any widget with a container so like here before this we put this directly at the body of the scaffold now we we have the whole thing plus uh, the original text composer is now uh, wrapped with a container so that you can define like a border or a box decoration and then you can customize the color here So what is a decoration? It creates a new box decoration object that defines the background color. And here we are using the card color defined by the team data object. And this will give the UI for composing messages of different background from the message list. Yeah, so like here, even though it is subtle, this background uh, it has a different color from the text text view here. So hot reload the app. Now it doesn't look like this because uh, it it hot reloads it uh, from whatever we have already insert into our messages list. Well, maybe I can start again by pressing hot restart. So now we are back to the empty state. Try sending a few chat messages just to see uh, the UI we have just built. Yep, so we can type here. Everyone, this is a uh, chat message. So this is working. And next, oh, we will put some animation. Let's see how do we actually add animation to the widget. So what are we going to add when the user sends a new chat message instead of simply displaying it we can animate the message vertically is up from the bottom of the screen okay so how are animations managed in flutter they are encapsulated as animation objects that contain the type value and status we can attach an animation object to a widget or listen for changes. Okay. Based on the changes, then the framework can modify the way your widget appears and rebuilds the widget tree. What we will do is we will need to specify an animation controller. All right, so this controller allows us to define the duration and the playback direction. Now we should update the chat screen state include, to include a ticker provider state mixing. So this part, we will add the mixing to chat screen state. Okay, then in the chat message class, add a variable to store the animation controller. So we add one more variable to the chat message constructor. Okay, our chat message is here. And we need to define the animation controller like this. Okay. 
Okay, then we will add the controller to the handle submitted method, which is here. Mm, dot forward. I wonder what that means. Where is my handle submitted? Okay, it's here. So the animation controller specify the runtime duration to be 700 milliseconds. Where is this defined? Oh, I need to put here as well. Okay. So here in the chat message constructor, so when we initialize, we will initialize with a animation controller um, this is wrong this should be a work case okay Now we have added the animation controller. So yep, we attach the animation controller to the chat message instance and specify that the animation should play forward, which is defined by this line, whenever the message is added to the chat list. So this is why we add to the handle submitted uh, method. When creating an animation controller, we must pass it a vsync argument. Okay, so this is the vsync. The vsync is the source of heartbeats that drive the animation forward. And this example uses a chat screen state as the vsync. So it adds a ticker provider state missing to the chat screen state class. What is a mixin? It allows a class body to be reused in multiple class hierarchies. So if you are not familiar with mixins, there are also further readout that you can click here. And now is we need to add a size transition widget. Has the effect of animating a clip right Incre uh, increasingly exposes as the text size in. Okay, let's see what it does. Add a size transition widget to the build method for chat message. Okay, let's see where are we adding this under chat message. Select the first container instance and wrap with widget. So we are wrapping the container widget with a size transition widget. Okay, let's do this in the chat message. Okay, my chat message is here. So I can either use a shortcut key or I can click on the light bulb here and wrap with the widget. So what should be the name of the widget? Uh, size transition. As well correctly. Size transition without the D. Okay. A red box appears that indicates a required property is missing from the widget class. Yeah, like here it says that the size factor is required. So we need to add that.
offers to create it. Let's see if it offers to create it. Yeah. So if I tap on this, it will create it, but initialize it with a now value. So now we replace the now with an instance of curve animation. Okay, let's see if I replace this with a curve animation. Now uh, I have two properties, one is parent, one is curve, both are required. For the parent, replace now with animation controller. And then for curve, replace it with curves dot is out. All right. So parent is an animation controller, and curve is a curves dot is out. And align after the size factor and enter axis alignment. Okay, so this one is I should add it to size transition with a value of zero. Okay, so size transition axis alignment. Zero. Okay, what, what can we observe here? The curve animation object, this one, in conjunction with the size transition class, produce an ease out animation effect as defined here. So the effect will cause the message to slide up quickly at the beginning of the animation and slow down until it comes to a stop. The size transition widget behaves as an animating click rectangle that exposes more of the text as it slides in. And there's a tip here, yeah. Just now uh, when I press save, it hot reloads the app and I see a red screen. So yeah, I call this a red C. Okay, why? It preserves the state of your app. In that case, if you already added any chat messages, that list is preserved. When Hot Reload attempts to update, it does not retroactively add the animation controller. Okay, so that means after I Oh, uh, today is Sabah election, is it? Okay. All right. Thanks, Eric, for joining. Bye. Uh, now we should do a hot restart. So here, once I hot restart, then the Red Sea disappear. And we need to also know how to dispose the animation controller because it's a good practice to do it so that it can free up your resources when they are no longer needed. Add the dispose method to the chat screen state. So, okay, before this, we don't have the dispose method. So we will add this at the bottom of chat screen state. Chat screen state is here, or you can also add it to the top. Uh, this post. Okay, I thought it would come up, but then it's okay. I will copy this. Let 
and paste it here. Okay, so the auto formatting, I guess I have already, uh, I've already configured in my Visual Studio Code so that at every time I press save, it will also run the dark formatter and it auto format the code for me. Reload the app and enter a few messages to observe the effect. Okay, we can try. Hello world. Uh -huh, so that's the animation. This is a message. And this is another message. We can see the is out effect. As the message is submitted, it's like in. So if you want to experiment further, you can also modify the duration value or specify different animation curve. So like here we have different uh, where is my curve? Yeah, it's here. So there are many types of animation curves here. You can try it out. There's bounce in, bounce out, is in out. So a lot of curves. And I guess you can also define your own uh, curve, if not mistaken. So let's try this, bounce out. Uh -huh. So you can use the hot reload and also try out the different curves to experiment the effect of the animation. And you can create a fade in effect by wrapping the container in the fade transition instead of a size transition. Oh, okay. So here in the container, now we have the size transition. I can also use a fade transition. So fade transition, it takes in a opacity parameter. So what is the opacity? Okay, so if I put 0 0.5, the child will be blend with 0 0.5 with his background. Let's see. Oops. I should provide something. Oh, animation double. Wait, this is an abstract class. What should I put here? <laughs> okay, let's see. With an opacity of V, Hmm. Is there an example usage? Uh, this is what I do whenever I don't understand the documentation. Fade transition is an animation oh, okay okay it's actually a curve animation
So it's similar to what we see just now. We also put an animation controller here. We can also define the animation curve. And let's see if it takes effect. Okay, so it fades in. All right. So I guess, yeah, now we are at the finishing touches. So what do we do? Make the send button context aware. Currently the send button appears enabled at even where there's no text. So what we want to do is we want to make the button uh, appearance change depending on whether the field contains a text to send. We can define a private variable inside the chat screen state. Okay. So inside here, we put an is composing variable. Add an on change to the chat screen state. So I should add this to inside of text field. All right, here inside text field. So here. So there is an on change method that will change the is composing state accordingly to the length of the text. And also we can add this on submitted to the text view. Yeah, is this correct? The argument was already specified. Oh, okay, okay is actually at the top here. I should re replace this. So now we update the on press callback in chat screen state. This is at the icon button. So here, copy, icon button on press. I will replace this with the new on press callback. And finally, we modify the handle submitted to set in its composing to false when the text field is cleared. Okay. Handle submitted is here. Actually, we can also, okay, I can put it here. Okay, so, oops. The on change callback notify the text view that user edited is text. So here, whenever you define something in the on change callback in text view, means that you are calling this part whenever the text view changes. So the value inside text view changes, it will call this method. The on change callback calls set state to change the value of is composing to true when the field contains some text. So this is uh, defined by this part here. So as long as it contains some text, it will set the is composing state to true. Yeah. When is composing is false, the on press property is set to null. So where is the on press? 
yeah, here. So this means that uh, when this is false, then on press will be set to now. So uh, the behavior of the icon button is whenever the on press is now, uh, the appearance of the icon button will be appear as disabled. I guess you can also see here when it's empty, then it is in gray color, which is the disabled color. So if I enter something that it changed to blue, the on submitted property was also modified so that it won't add an empty string to the message list. Yeah, so this one is to prevent when user hasn't typed in type anything but press send or press enter then it actually adds an empty string to the messages array the in is composing variable now controls the behavior and the visual appearance of the send button which is what we see here so when it's empty then it change to gray again when there's uh, at least some text here, then it will change to blue. And that color, it follows the our team, con, uh, team's accent color. So yep, when user press send button, it calls the handle submitted method. Yeah, so this is what we see. It changes to the disabled color for the button. Okay, final step, which is to wrap long lines. So right now, if we type a very long messages that cannot contain in a single line, uh, Okay, maybe I type something longer. It overflows. So we need to fix this. Now we will wrap the column widget with an expanded widget. How do we wrap this? Same as just now when we wrap with the size transition widget, we can use a shortcut key or uh, click on the bulk icon to bring up the menu. So we are wrapping column. This is under chat message, right? Okay. So under chat message. Chat message. Uh, column this column okay we will wrap this with expanded oh okay now it auto wrap to the next line just by adding this Expanded widget allows the child widget to impose layout constraints. Here it constrains the width of the text widget. Yeah, it's normally defined by its content. And finally, we can also customize the look and feel for different platforms. So how do we do that? Yeah, we can customize the send button to use the material design icon button on Android and Cupertino button on iOS. So this is what you can do. You can define two different team data. So I will just copy and paste this after the main method. Okay. After main, paste this.
So the default team specify the color for Android. So we have purple with orange accent. And the iOS specify for iOS platform. So we have light gray with orange accents. Now we can modify the friendly chat app to vary using the team property. So now we can define this in our material app. Okay, my material app is here. I'll put it here. Default target platform is undefined. Okay. Did I miss something? Modify the team of the app bar widget. So in the build method, Okay, I find this. Place the cursor between the two right parentheses and then add the following two lines. So this one should add inside app bar, I guess. Where is my app bar? Inside chat screen state. Okay. Uh, here. Sorry, not text. The top level default target platform. Oh, okay. I think I forgot to import something. Yep, I need to import this. Or can I auto import here? Yeah, I can. So, ta da! Now I have hot reloaded it. So, now uh, because I'm running a, an iOS simulator, so now it will follow the iOS team that I have defined here. Okay, so this property are used to select the team and we can also customize the elevation. This will define the Z coordinates. So this is the shadow of the app bar. So here, because we are in iOS, the elevation that it use is zero as we define, where is it? Here. So if the platform is iOS, then elevation is zero, which is what we see here. Okay, finally, we can customize the send icon for Android and iOS. So at this import, And in the chat screen states, build text composer, modify the line that assigns icon button. Change this, okay. So now we are adding this on top of the icon button. 
Okay, where is icon button? It's here. Okay, so now on iOS, we are using a Cupertino button instead of the icon button we defined just now. So now you can see the send text here, which we defined here. This border, okay, sorry. Uh, wrap the top level column in a container widget. Give it a light gray border on its upper edge. So, okay, wait. Okay, it's here. In the chat screen state build method, Uh, select the column that appears after body and then wrap with container. So here I need to wrap with a container in the chat screen state. This is chat screen state. Scaffold at bar, wrap with container. Okay, so now we have container. We can add the decoration like this. Okay. Hot reload the app. You should see different colors, shadows, and icon buttons for Android and for iOS. Okay. Yeah, I guess for for those who are running on Android emulator, you will see something like this, and. Right now, I'm running uh, an iOS simulator, so I'm seeing this. Uh, Audrey mentioned that for Mac OS, is it better to use the Xcode simulator? Actually, I think it's the same because uh, when you when you press the run here or you are typing Flutter run in your terminal, uh, at the back, it will it will use Xcode to uh, run the simulator for you. So I guess that's the same. And I much prefer this way because you can control everything from your IDE instead of you have to open up Xcode again and then press run and then you lose the hot reload function as well. So I guess we are done. Yeah, so there are further uh, code labs that you can explore. And I have, I have here like different examples that you can explore. So this, these two weeks we are exploring on how to build layouts in Flutter. Uh, we explore on the row and column widgets. There are also many other layout widgets that you can use. So you can like go to code pen. There are many different examples. The examples that I really like is by Mariano. So here he has created like several clones of an app uh, using Flutter. So like if you explore here, there's a WhatsApp clone and then you can see the source code of the UI here. So What's good is he actually code this in a responsive way. So like here is what you normally see in the uh, WhatsApp web view. 
then if let's say this gets smaller on smaller screen this mimics the whatsapp mobile view so like you have a single source code that can cater on both interfaces like how how cool is that so yeah there are many uh, different widgets that he used which i think is quite good if you want to study how how things work and also how do you compose very com uh, complex ui this is a good place and yeah there are many other examples that you can explore on code pen or in any other places as well so i think i will i will put the link in the facebook group so that you can uh, open up and explore anytime you want so yep that's and that's the end of the session today uh, do you guys have any question okay uh don't worry if you face any uh, issues where, uh, outside of the session because anytime you can come to the Facebook group and uh, create a post for discussion or you can also comment on, on other posts here. And yep. Uh, next week we will, we will have our final session for the series the beginner series so we, we will try to write the flutter the flutter desktop application and actually i'm not sure whether this code lab is still relevant or not because recently flutter has released the flutter desktop alpha I think I will open this up. So maybe you have seen this post that uh, Flutter has recently released. So now they have better support for desktop applications. And with, with single source code, you can deploy to not only to mobile, uh, not only to web, but now you can also deploy as a desktop application on all uh, like Windows, Mac, and Linux also. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, see you guys next week for the very last time in the series. After this, I'm not sure whether I will start with the intermediate track right away, or maybe we will take a break for now. Yeah, let's see how. And then if any of you would like to volunteer to start another uh, track for the beginners, feel free to contact me, let me know. Yeah, I'll be happy to uh, guide you or provide you the materials. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining and see you next week. Happy weekend. Bye-bye.